We're in Etobicoke near the beach, which is lovely. Great community with lots of young kids. Um, and the homeowners purchased this house, which was built in the 1940s from, I believe, the original owners. So everything was OG when we got it. And I'm gonna send you some before pics. She's a doozy. The kitchen was originally located where the dining room is and it was all closed off. So to get to the kitchen, you went through the foyer into the kitchen. And it was like the original kitchen from when the house was built. It was just cabinets on one wall, original sheet vinyl floors, everything original. So we initially started by trying to figure out a better layout because obviously they're a family with young child. So we wanted to make sure that it was gonna be open for entertaining. And obviously we changed everything. We played with a ton of different layouts and in the end, we really liked the idea of having these two large patio doors so that we could really increase the connection to the backyard. The backyard is huge and we love the idea of just having this like party flow in and out of the house. Do you remember what color you put on the couch? Yes, I do. It's Benjamin Moore wrought iron. And what's funny is because we had picked the dark appliances because we wanted the appliances to blend in because we don't have a lot of cabinets and the symmetry of the back wall works with the pantry and the fridge looking the same. And when I contacted my appliance rep, he said, oh no, the color that matches is this specific black. I thought that doesn't look right to me. So I went and got the chip and went up to the showroom, totally different color. And what's funny is the original color I picked was actually the best match. So we went back to our original color, which was Benjamin Moore wrought iron. We wanted to make sure that it felt light and bright as well as having these dark cabinets. So we wanted to do some glass into the uppers around the stove, but we didn't necessarily want to see everything inside the glass. So we introduced a fluted glass. The fluted glass ties in nicely with the ribbing on the island. Redid. Okay, yes. The ribbing sounds like a condom. Again, different video, it's a different video. We wanted to tie in the fluted glass with the reeded wood on the ends in the back of the island. A lot of the inspiration images we looked at had marble and a marble hood and the slab backsplash and that really you know, high end seamless look. But for practicality reasons, they're not always the best. So in this case, we found this incredible porcelain that looks just like Carrera marble. It's indestructible. You can put hot things on it. It doesn't scratch, it doesn't stain. So in this situation, it was the perfect solution. So again, not a huge space that we were working with, but we wanted to create a nice dining area that would have comfortable seating. Banquette seemed like the obvious solution. Once again, space saver. In this case, the banquette enables us to fit more space. It also gave us additional storage and really helped create a dining area that felt like its own space and is grounded by the cabinetry of the banquette. We had to put in forced air because we had rads and there was no air conditioning. So our vertical run is entirely in the left-hand cabinet and that's what helped us because otherwise we would have had a giant bulkhead. One tip that I think people forget is everyone has bulkheads. It's just when you don't see the magazines because they're hidden. So, you know, you can hide them behind millwork. That millwork is all dummy. There's nothing in it. I keep thinking that's a roll of tape, but it's a prop. I, like multiple times today, I'm like, is that duct tape? It's not. I feel like this is the great debate with everyone lately is, is there a TV on the main floor? Is there not a TV on the main floor? So everyone has different opinions and different things work for different people. But the reality is if you have a young child, you have to be where they are. So having a TV on the main floor means you can use your main floor and you're not hanging out in your basement all day. We really wanted to get a bigger sectional in here to make it more comfortable and cozy. So we actually shifted the entire opening from the foyer into the living room. The original opening was over here and we shifted it over down the hall, which enabled us to have a long wall for a bench in the foyer. And then also gave us a long wall for a sectional in the living room. Two birds, one stone. In the living room, probably the biggest ticket item was really the floor, which is everywhere, and the fireplace. The original fireplace was really ugly. So we talked a lot about what we wanted to do and we wanted to introduce a new fireplace and a gas insert that they'd be able to use and would be really useful for them as a family. In a perfect world, we might have done full built-in millwork on either side, but we didn't necessarily want to do bookshelves because I think it would have added to a lot of visual clutter in here. And there is so much millwork, it might seem like overkill. So we ended up doing these floating shelves, which I think work really well. They give you a display space. They also give you storage, you know, with baskets can go under them with toys for kids, but it still keeps it feeling open and light and airy. And then we added molding detail above them as well to create this like picture frame effect for art and for the TV on one side. Another thing we really focused on in here was making sure that the architecture felt relevant to the age of the house. So these arches are not original, but they are something that you would see a lot in houses of that era. So I love an arch and I feel like everyone's crazy about an arch right now. An arch works really well in certain circumstances. I always say it's not about what's in and out, it's about what fits for your house and your location. And that's what I feel like in the end ends up making the house feel more honest. 
with the entrance, the priority is always getting some storage. So there was an existing closet. The old drywall closets are not super functional. So what we generally do is tear them out and replace it with a millwork closet. It takes up less space. A drywall closet is usually 24 on the inside then plus a four inch wall. Whereas a millwork closet can be two and still hold a hanger. It is not enormous, but it fits a lot of stuff. There's pullouts in the bottom and shelves up top and rods inside. So everything you need going in and out the door, but also nicely organized and tucked out of the way. She's really tidy. You can open any of the drawers here. Lara's real tidy. One of the few original things in the house is the stairs. The wood was not in amazing condition, plus it was old red oak, whereas our new floors are white oak with a very light stain, and it's hard to get those two to match. So instead we painted the stairs and put a runner, and we kept the original railing and painted that dark also. We wanted to play a lot in this house with contrast. So we wanted to have it feel light and airy, but we also wanted these intense moments of like dark contrast to make it feel cozy and homey and also to create some interest. As much as I think it's important to match or at least relate somehow to the age of your house through the architecture, I think where you can really play around with stuff is the furniture that you bring into the space. You know, if the shell of your house suits the age of your home, you can go super modern on your interior furnishings, or you can also go, you know, more transitional if you want it to be more relaxed. I just think there's lots of options there. And whatever you do is always gonna look like it fits with the shell because the shell relates to the house that stands there.